Welcome to Deeply Disturbing Things, the podcast. I'm Macy. And I'm Naomi. And we're two anxious counselors who are really excited to be on microphones and headphones for you all. I think it's been a couple years. It has been a couple of years. It's not that we got lazy. We got so lazy. I don't think it was laziness. There was just one point when you said, yeah, but it's a lot of work. I and think do we really need them? Yeah, I, I do think we did because we, we already had debacled. We debacled that. I feel like we figured that it out was a time time. that it just seemed complicated. Well, and I felt like we didn't need them. And then no, remember, we got used to not having them. I went, we did COVID and remote and like, I we the, lost the almost cord. Moved. Yeah. So I think find the adapter. So we were like, you know what? Let's just, not we don't need them. Yeah. We I think it was about trying to streamline and simplify. But now that we have them back, I realize we actually sound way better with and them. And I want to like look at you more <laughs> while, while you're talking to me. And it feels like more podcasty. That's why I did that. Having the headphones. And having like, the headphones. Oh. <laughs> I feel way podcasty right now. I'm so podcast. Welcome. My name is podcast. All right. All right. Sorry, I'm trying to get this where I can lean and get my back against this from You're about to enter the psychological spin cycle. You like what I did there? Mm, keeping it fresh. Keeping it fresh. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> shoot. I mean, it's our podcast. We swear all the time. We had a microphone uh, mishap just now. We're getting used to this equipment again. They just, you, you're, you, welcome to the vortex. There's noises and shit. There is noises. It's going to get messy. It's going to probably get better and then get worse at some points because we're yeah. going to make adjustments and you're going to, you hold, you're holding that like an ice cream cone. <laughs> I don't know how else to hold it. Uh, probably with a mic stand. Well, next time. This is the best thing I've had in my life. I know. Wow. That's... It's the only cider I drink. Space giraffe. You will feel like a space giraffe in a moment. I don't know what that means. What's a space giraffe? That's what you'll feel like. Is it a minute. giraffe in space? Look at the picture. Or the space, space like a giraffe. Oh, it is. Okay. He's not surviving. That's what that picture is. He's. No, he's having fun. No, 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 no. He's losing oxygen. That's no, what he's speaking. But he's having fun. Someone has fun while they lose oxygen. Look at him. Well, that's Yay. not true. He's like, yay, go to space. Blast off. Yay. Are you talking like a horse noise? Yay. No, this is a giraffe. I'm turning off. I know, but you're making a horse noise. No, that was a giraffe noise. Yay. You do not get to claim that you know what a giraffe sounds like. I do. Because I don't believe you. I see giraffes at the zoo all the time. Do they go, yay? They do when they're blasting off to space. They sound exactly like that. I can't say otherwise. So you win. You win. You win. All right. It's your turn. Uh, what do you got? It's my turn. Okay. I'm going to talk about D N R A. Oh, NARA? Yeah. The National Raccoon Association. I'm just kidding. Uh, the National Rifle Association. Correct. Yep. Or NARA. Is it? Do they go by Nara no, formally? I just made that up. And I'm just gonna say, I'm sure somebody I already says that. stop. I haven't even done my disclaimer yet. Oh. My disclaimer is, I'm sorry for anybody that has. I like, I'm not. I'm just. I'm providing the facts that I find. Some things may be wrong. Some things may be right. Some things are probably wrong to you and are right to other people. And oftentimes, I don't care. I will look though at multiple sources and. We do share our opinions here on the podcast, and they are our opinions. You do not need to have them. In mm. fact, if you have them, give them back. I feel like this is going to be controversial with that. No. Leader. I just, I feel like you probably already said something offensive somehow to some people. Like, this Me? is, the oh, NRA is, a, like, has become, and it's, it's a big, it's a big thing. It's in a lot of things. It's kind of like that to me when I was looking into this. It's like your Scientology topic. Mm-hmm. Are they them? haven't come for us. I was worried for a while. I know. I mean, but don't... they have not come for us. Knock on wood. What are you doing? I don't think I'm scared of them. What does that even mean? <laughs> In your short shorts. I feel like I could take them. Like who? The Scientology police. Who is that? Who's name one of the actors in it? 
Tom Cruise. They're gonna send Tom Cruise after you. Yeah, are not you scared. not scared? Not scared. Are you gonna face palm him? I can he's take his little five, five three self. Three. <laughs> That's like me. Yeah, and you 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 you'd lay me out. You dead leg him. I would. A hip to the thigh. <laughs> hip to the face. <laughs> you go to hang him to the face. <laughs> Be like, what's that on the ground that you dropped your phone? <laughs> Bam. Okay, so well, I'm glad. I mean, that you're at the forefront of that concern that I had. I guess. I got it. Cool. Um, I'm currently trying to find the page I just disappeared from. All right, all right, all right. All right. So, so a lot of times the NRA comes up in our knowledge of common talk. <laughs> I never hear about it unless there's like a mass shooting. Honestly. For my knowledge of it but i'm not in the world um i do own a gun i'll just say that i do own a gun it's a, a sig sour sour sig sour, um, it's a german gun I'm probably saying that wrong hmm. i like it it's a pretty pretty looking gun i've taken it to the range i've gone shooting in a indoor and outdoor i find that enjoyable i've not shot anything otherwise mm -hmm. how about yourself i do not own a gun but i've shot a gun a few times I've had some fun shooting. Um, I actually illegally shot a gun in things. this neighborhood in my backyard. <laughs> Full disclosure. <laughs> How do I not know that? I was thinking, I always learn new things. Is this in your book? <laughs> no, I just remembered it. <laughs> tell, tell me more. Tell us more, please. We, I lived on the other side know. of the neighborhood. It was when I first started dating Dave. And Dave, like, you know, had a gun. So. Okay. And we were getting drunk and i thought i was being cute and ah. just shot it off the back porch <laughs> right over by rosarch and he he got really mad and was like so like can't brown, do that. brown's edition was like a really nice place to be until this one timeline <laughs> when a gunshot was heard out of brown's edition and then it just got sketchy from there on out i was 23 i mean it was dumb you're lucky to be in a year after that <laughs> well, um, i've shot guns uh primarily with dave um outside like mm. not in the backyard that was the right. one time but like out of mm -hmm. town like at Same. his farm yeah we have places I, i've guy. gone with my dad and a few of his friends where it'd be like um they'd have like like rifles and shotguns and you know get to shoot different things which was it honestly it was fun i was a better i'm a better shot than i ever should be without having done any practice. yeah i mean i grew up super hippie um upbringing just don't say hippie dippy down in well no we're not we weren't dippy what does dippy mean though is stupid that, is it oh it's an insult yeah it's an is, insult. It, is it is it a like what years is dippy used i've never heard that in my era well it was when hippies were big and the people that weren't hippies would put them down and think everything mm, that I they were about that. was stupid and dumb that's interesting See, so I wouldn't have even say you're hippy dippy whatever oh. you're stupid hippie, dippy, foolish dippy idea you're hippy dippy wheat germ what Oh. Your hippy dippy carob ships. I can't even tell you the last time I was. And I don't think I've ever said the word. Um, <laughs> so I grew up very hippy. I mean, actually went to Hit Ashbury. Very preschool. smart hippie. Very savvy. Yeah, I yeah. mean, hippies aren't dippy necessarily. I mean, are they just I mean like drug... modern day hippies? Is it the like, are a little dippy? Drug referencing is that kind of like? The... I think it's the whole belief system. It was okay. the long hair. It was a piece of love. It was all that. But. Um, so I grew up very anti-gun, mm -hmm. like guns were bad. My mom didn't right. even let me play with squirt guns. Okay. Like when the kids were having squirt gun fights outside, I had to really? use a squirt bottle, which was super embarrassing. Um, so when I came up here to this area where it's a totally different culture, I had to like make a big decision being married, you know, to Dave who was going to have guns mm -hmm. around. Like, what were my kids' involvement going to be? And right. so I had to decide, which I decided I would rather them grow up and be safe with guns than have it be... Like an unknown. Like, they're going to, you know, pick it up at a slumber party and act like it's a toy or whatever. So even though it freaking terrifies me still to this day when I know they're going to be shooting guns, mm -hmm. I would rather them be familiar with them and respect them and be safe around them than not. So that was like a really difficult decision I had to make when my kids were really little. And I still stand by it. I would still make yeah. that same decision if I went back. Well, there's so many uh, like really sad stories of like the, the kid that pulls his mom's gun out of her 
purse and mm -hmm. kills his brother or something. Like, it's just sad. And, or himself, or shoots. I mean, we're or... basically sitting on top of an arsenal right now. I believe that. <laughs> Don't listen, NTSB. NTSB, why? I mean, I don't know. National tobacco and safety board or something I don't know. do they monitor your i don't think they like people to have too many guns i think that's when you get into a ruby ridge situation it, am i being um blocked by your ex-husband from going to scientific american article that i have <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not allowing me um no this is my wi-fi i pay for it mm -hmm. oh no Breaking wonder. I'm on. You probably have to subscribe. I'm on Xfinity Wi-Fi right now. That's oh, why. Oh, get ew. off it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I have to remember. Hey. You want it, me to say the no, Wi-Fi code no, just on put the it podcast? In my, put it in my brain. Look at me hard. Do you want to <laughs> type it? Here, type it. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Um, Sorry. I'll just you. tell you. No, 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 no. Please just. The code. No. You want the code? Type the code in. Look how fast she folded. That was like ridiculous. If you need to scam somebody, <laughs> she's right here. All you have to do is make it a little inconvenient. <laughs> well, the second I so back to yes, start thinking about really security, late. and then I balance it out with convenience. <laughs> Sometimes convenience wins. I mean, to me, it's that. It's also like, well, what don't they have about me already? Like, psh, fine. Like it. every time I turn everything off on my phone because I get all paranoid, I immediately am, like can't function and <laughs> turn it back on. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> I mean, I I get that. It's I don't think I've ever lived without my phone. I want to take a vacation where you don't take have yourself. any technology. Yeah, I want to do that. I haven't done that since before I had technology ever. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, it. sorry. Let me see if. Oh my gosh, you didn't put it in right. <sighs> okay. 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 Um. Number. It's a number. Okay. Can you use sign language though? Like actually though. Well, one, two, three, four. Number four. <laughs> Oh, I see. I was like, you're you're doing it wrong. Okay. And then capital. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. And I got that. Okay. And then exclamation at the end. Okay. <laughs> I need the middle part. Okay. All right. So, uh, sorry. While I get connected to I'm the sweaty. appropriate whiffes. Um. All right. Okay. Let's see if it allows me in. Here we go. All right. Did you like my personal gun story? I do. I think it sounds really dangerous. I have... Um, what? That sounds dangerous. Shooting a gun in your neighborhood? Yeah. I mean, I agree that that was a really bad decision. One of, one many, of many that I made when I was in my 20s and teens. I agree with you. And it's in my 30s, even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um, My only, like, bad gun experience, personally... Well, one, I left one of those outdoor range places that you're not... I don't know, it's like a gravel pit. But I was there with my dad and um, like a family showed up and they, someone was like trying to show off and putting a pumpkin on his head and having his son like shoot at the pump. And we left. We were like, oh, no, I, I don't want to witness you mean, like, that happen. Like shoot the pumpkin off. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's just going to end well. Stupid. That's I mean, not... someone could have died that day. I don't know. We left. <laughs> I didn't want to be responsible for that. No. Um, yeah. So, you know, RIP or well done. I don't know which one to do. Uh, I mean, was alcohol involved? I don't know. They, it was a family. They dish soda. Sure, uh, the other one I had was actually with a uh, ex of mine who had bought a gun from like a friend and it had no safety on it. And I was sitting in the kitchen doing homework and I had headphones and listening to classical music because, you know, whatever. Why not? Being all posh about it. My jasmine tea zend out and all of a sudden i hear it just big bang um like what's going on what's going on and and then and dogs are barking and and he he just casually walks out in the bedroom he's like what mm. i'm like no 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 <laughs> what was that and uh and then that's when i see a hole through the wall of the bedroom mm that uh, went across the top of the bed, through the wall, and uh, literally wedged into the beam right across from right where I was sitting at the table. So uh, very well could have hit me. It didn't, thank goodness. But um, yeah, stupid. You have to be so Dangerous. safe with guns. I mean, that's 
Like, the, like, like don't use them when you, you don't can't, need to use them. <laughs> like, there's no other way. Like, that is an absolute right. black and white. Like, ultimate safety all the time. Yeah, right. So that's my, like, scary story. But um, other than that, it's been fun to shoot them. I have... I don't think I feel safer. Like, actually, my gun's at my dad's house. <laughs> when I tend to feel safer when it's actually not there, which is odd. Yeah. I don't know. It's like... I mean, I've you know, had many years to think, like, should I get one for safety? And I have ultimately decided no, because I'm not comfortable or confident with them, and it would just be more dangerous I think, to have it than not. Right. I think uh, if I was scared enough and I felt threatened enough, I would shoot someone. <laughs> and so I think that my confidence in that decision, that scares me. Yeah, but that could be my kid, like, coming in late or something, you know? it's like I mean, they know. shouldn't be coming into my house, so... <laughs> That's, but I still don't want to shoot your kid. But you just never know. Just I don't know. know. I just, it, for me, it's just not right. my choice. It would not make me safer. It would probably make me more dangerous, too. Oh, wait. I'm very accident prone. Yeah. So it will happen. Something would. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, that's, yeah. There you go. That, those are the personals. So um, aside from that, uh, the National Rifle Association, also known as the NRA, it was founded in... NRA. Or, I don't, I'm not... I'm not going to condone that. That's the one I think I'm going to get in trouble for. Um, it was founded in 1871. So it's been around a really long time. It has 5 million members. That's a lot. That is like Scientology. <laughs> um, it's. I don't think Scientology has 5 million members. You don't? No. I think that's. No? Wow. I, mean, I think it has way less. Wow. I wonder if it, you have to, like, if there's a membership fee for the NRA or not. I, there probably is. And then you get a sticker for your car. Or your, or your bike. <laughs> it's like uh, when we used to be in the Wildlife Federation, you get that cute panda the sticker. World wildlife, yeah. yeah. But that's op kind of the opposite. But uh, you still get a sticker? It's like the PETA, too. I get I got a sticker. Oh, God, I would not wear <laughs> ride with a PETA sticker. I had a PETA sticker. It was one about, like, not testing on rats, because I had pet rats. And stuff. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they have a point, but I think they go too far. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I think that there, this is true with most, most things. You, you, what you stand for and what you do aren't always the same thing. Gotta walk the talk. So. Put up or shut up. This has been one of the most feared and effective players in politics, which is confusing to me. <laughs> and I don't understand why. Uh, why they're so powerful well, i mean not just the like why they're so powerful part but like why does that why is that a topic that matters and i learned more about that because around learning about this but yeah it's that whole amendment mm -hmm. thing right right um and we've had topics before uh remember the topic with the um ah gosh the one who like had uh, the legal guns bought and then they got like trapped up on the on the hill top house yeah and... ruby ridge ruby ridge right, just... right 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 local right um and there was like a lot of talk about the weapons involved and, and so a lot mm -hmm. of times in some of these cases it's like they're on maybe undocumented weapons or they're ones that aren't yeah that's what i was saying like they don't like you to do like too many like they don't want you to have a cache Right. Of weapons or like too many like what is too many rounds to have i think I, i'm sure it's defined somewhere it is um it is actually and uh it's different for every like state too so you have all those things washington has a pretty um stringent uh background check thing that they process that they do but there's like work there's like weird workarounds mm -hmm. for like um I'll, I'll share about this in a minute. So gonna, it'd be yeah. really interesting no. to have my ex husband weigh in on this because no, he's so like, extreme yeah. on like one end. On the, it, it would be interesting though to, I mean, and again, we'll probably get people sharing. And, and then you'll see like, wow, you two are married. You're so different. <laughs> <laughs> You're so opposite. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so they, the power of the organization is. Uh, really strong. I don't know. They publish report cards. Like they, 
like for how strong they are all the way up to like an A to an F. So like it's either they get like blamed for a defeat in something or they get like praised for like something getting passed. So they're kind of like on this swing of being a deciding factor. Uh, and even some of the groups um, like that they're really, they like A's and A pluses for, for in favor of, um, it can actually make a difference in who like the Republican primary candidates are. Like it has that much of a sway. Yeah, they're powerhouse. So they've anchored the, the uh, anchored opposition in every major gun related debate since it's altered its main aim from marksmanship to hard edge political activism. So it originally started about marksmanship. So that was about 40 years ago when uh, shifts in political sentiment started changing and the departure of Southern rural conservatives from the Democratic Party. So a lot of political changes. Um, and this helped elect the first pre presidential candidate to ever be endorsed by the NRA, which was Ronald Reagan in 1980. Ronnie Reagan. Mm -hmm. So I love that this article uses the word juggernaut. <laughs> love that word. So what is this juggernaut? How did it become? Oh, another great one. I love a de facto. I love that word too. Ar and, like, arbiter. Before we started recording, I was sharing. I love the word interface. Interface. I'm going to add that. In this interface, we will be exploring what exactly is this juggernaut of influence and how did it become the de facto arbiter of firearm laws in society? Oh. We could be something big. Could we? Real big. I think so. By reading somebody else's words? Slightly in an accent and skipping parts and adding little bits. Oh, yeah. It's the added bits and the, the skipping that is key. The tittle bits. Yeah. So, all right. So the group's website as this is their introduction. While widely recognized today as a major political force and as America's foremost defender of Second Amendment rights, the NRA has, since its inception, been the premier firearms education organization in the world. Modest. Yeah. Um, so this was actually started by union officers who were upset over Civil War recruits' poor shooting skills. Oh. And this made me think back to uh, oh, a book I read. You might have read it too, but like... Um, Which book? You know, uh, the Psychology of Evil. I don't know if you ever read that. I don't think I did. So, but it, it's basically just like talks about how um, like the acts of like murder of all kinds. So ending someone's life like close up by influence of being enrolled, like, or just on your own, all mm -hmm. those different factors. And one of the things it said was in the Civil War, they did, like, so many people just shot over the heads of people because they didn't naturally want to kill people. Well, especially when it's, like, could be your brother right? on the other side. Right, so there was this, like, hey, nobody's dying. <laughs> and so then they started having uh, big punishments for uh, if you... Mm -hmm. um, were a deserter or anything like that so there was a, a lot around that and so the, the poor shooting skills part um, might have to do with some of that too so it goes back to the civil war and two former union officers who had um, got really upset about their recruits an official study estimated that yankee troops fired 1,000 rounds for every bullet that actually struck a confederate soldier mm a lot around a lot of wasted ammunition well i don't think the guns were that um accurate, accurate. right but I, I feel like if you're an officer you would like be like that's a realistic that's not realistic mm -hmm. so if they're upset i mean or unless it's just they're in trouble and so they have to say that i don't know what do you think i don't know i don't i don't know what would be a realistic expectation for the time i mean i guess not that because they're upset I guess, maybe. Sorry. I mean, okay. maybe they're just upset kind of people. Could be. These two could have been talking shit. They I could went have... and saw Inside Out two today, and it was. People have. Told I was me sobbing things. in the theater. I have, people have said good things about it, and I I kind of want to not like it already, but I can't because people are saying nice things. Well, did you like the first one? You did a lot. Well, I then have, you'll like the I second have Inside one. Out characters because so. it's like the same, but. More, but that's the part I don't like. More feelings. Like, I want... Well, she says puberty, so there's more feelings. I want different things. Well, it is. There's, like, way more feelings. I don't want to cry during 
actually made me cry. I've I've multi cried during Inside Out. Yeah, I was like crying in the theater and then um, pretending oh. I wasn't. And then I rubbed pop, pop, popcorn salt in my eye, trying to oh, casually slick a tear. And then you cried more. And then mm -hmm. I cried more. And then um, mm -hmm. Stella and I both got salt burns on our lips from eating too much popcorn. And then we had to apply chapstick in the dark. Salt burns? That's yeah. not a thing. Yeah, our lips were burning from the salt. Is it because you had chapped lips? No, it's because we were eating too much salty movie popcorn. Okay, all right. I'm not going to question it. I don't know. I'm sure it burns. So yes. I yeah yeah it does salt burns it does if I put it in a wound and rub it on your lips I guess see what happens you have lip wounds I don't have lip wounds just we're not used to we don't need a lot of salt in my house so <laughs> this burns your lips that salt and popcorn <laughs> was like a lot did you add more salt no I know I shouldn't be stuck on this but I'm a big movie theater I really want popcorn now um okay no it just comes with a lot of salt a lot more salt than we're used to eating so mm. it it burned our lips it can be pretty salty huh all right guns here we go so new york helped the nri nra buy its first shooting range mm. so this was um i don't know 20th they say 20th century i really wish they just like say when um i don't, I don't know uh, they, the army at times donated surplus equipment for training and the state of New York helped the NRA buy its first shooting range. So it was kind of in the cooperation, like, Hey, you help us, we help you nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, which is great. Then, uh, they were given a kind of that, that I mean, in the early years of survival in the United States, people were giving guns to defend themselves, right? Like in their, their little territories and squares of land, land masses. So it, they, it has been viewed by many as a, a central and an inherent way of American culture from where, whence, from whence some came. Yeah, I mean, it's associated with freedom. Individuality, it's also independence. associated yeah. with having an ability to not have the government take you over right right like you have an ability to fight back right it's associated with that too so mm -hmm. whatever you want to call that like the tea party on me drinking my jasmine tea look how things come around <laughs> after abraham lincoln uh, two other presidents were shot by assassins and Theodore Roosevelt sustained and survived a short range uh, gunshot wound. And so this began talking about uh, or these types of situations started to begin talks around availability of guns and the desire desirability of like, like restrictions. Like should there be restrictions? And of course, NRA wanted to be in on that conversation. Like, okay, uh, we have an opinion. So, guess what? They weren't always like against gun restrictions. The NRAs. No, what did you call it? The NRA? NRA. NRA. So, especially, for example, they wanted to limit um, in past generations uh, trafficking, like gun trafficking, especially like with. Um, uh, they use the words ex-convicts, but whatever. So uh, people have been released from prisoner jail sentences <laughs> and mental patients against uh, people who have a mental health mm -hmm. diagnosis. Uh, when handguns started to become the focus, uh, there was a break off of a subgroup devoted, devoted just to handguns to support state level permit requirements for concealed weapons. So they were actually kind of in the realm of giving some structure and information and education around these things to policymakers. And then the prohibition era came and that's when the urban use of shotguns and the fully automatic Thompson gun. Tommy guns. Right. Became a big, like, focal point. So, Hallmark, um, bank robber, 
look. Yeah, I mean, Gangsters. looking back now, it's sort of romanticized, you know, the whole mm-hmm. Bonnie and Clyde era. Like hanging out the the Model T. Yeah, with your suicide doors. Maybe a Model A, Model T, Clyde or something. Um, yeah, and that became a big thing, though, in the... Is that Fra- bad to say now? Should we not say Which suicide one? doors? No, no, they are suicide doors, I know, actually. but... Thinking I mean, so I know what you're saying. Lens, I know, I see what you're saying. Should we not be calling them that? I just have never... Um, I, <laughs> I like a good suicide door, so now I'm upset about that. And they do they they open the other way. It's for a quick rollout yeah, yeah. concept. Um, yeah, I mean it doesn't always have to be for somebody killing themselves. It could be for no a, for a the, bank heist to get away or, or playing chicken. Yeah, yeah. Let's think about that. All dangerous situations, really. Um, and just you know, I'm a car lover, so I just think they're cool looking. They are cool looking <laughs> and functional when you have those things happening. So. I don't know. I'm Handy in a heist. Handy in a heist. That might be the name of this podcast. In it. I mean, when my my sister was just here and we had a conversation about why do they call making a U-turn slipping a bitch? Like, should we not say that anymore? Oh. Like, what's the... Dang it. Are you going to... Like, up? what what's the origins to that? Well, <laughs> I had that with, like, master bedroom. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's wrong. There are so many things that you're like, oh, that's not appropriate. <laughs> Yeah, and you kind of got to dig into the origins of it. Yeah, or just like slowly think about it. (laughs) Um, What was the one that you just said, though? Slipping a bitch. No, the one before that. Suicide doors. Yeah. um, What are you looking at? (laughs) Is it PC to say that? Um, Suicide doors are the doors that are hinged at the rear, making ingress and egress easier at the cost of natural fail-safe on normally hinged doors. Backward hinged doors. Oh, so it's about safety because the doors don't have the hinge that will make it like stop, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean that's okay. So like if you have those doors, you're basically killing yourself or whatever. Right, 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 right. Um, they were <laughs> before they were <laughs> called suicide doors. They were just doors. They're back, just doors. Backward opening doors. Well, it doesn't and very common in early cars, or that's... called a double door. Double door. Yeah, I kind of like doors. Um, Just doors. Uh, in a 1965 book, Ralph Nader <laughs> oh. wrote a book about un- called "Unsafe at Any Speed." Uh, there's types of those that I'm not going to talk about because it's not a topic. But um, yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to think about how I feel about that term because sometimes I don't listen to what other people say. Mm-hmm. Like somebody told me um, that the term bullet points is offensive to Sam. Oh, well, I, and I did the topic a uh, deadline, remember? Yeah, the and deadline. I decided, you know, at this time, I'm probably going to continue to say bullet points. What's, I mean, I now that I, again, say it slowly, I get it. I'm sure. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, you, I, gotta, you can't You can't do everything. Take ownership for everything. Everything, uh, yeah. I mean, and so deadline to me, I don't like it because it's not the meaning of my words. Right. Um, so I decided to change. I tried to say like the due date, yeah, or something like that. Because I don't mean that. I don't mean that. Right. I don't mean a deadline. Exactly. I, it's rather harsh. I don't know. Everything else talks about installation and safety concerns. That's a lot I mean, stuff. there's people where the scent of lavender is a trauma reminder. I mean, we can't make a completely padded world and, like you said, take ownership for everybody's comfortability. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to hit the big ones for sure and be cognizant, but I mean, pretty soon you're, you're, it's, it limits you being able to just talk. Right. Because you're so worried about what you're going to say. So I just, I randomly just in that list of things that from that suicide door thing, uh, there was a post that said social media post warns people not to call 988, which is the suicide crisis. Like short warns people like, not to? Yeah. And it says, here's what you need to do. So I was like, what? Wait, what? Yeah. And then I was, huh? Why would we huh? not call and this is on it? NPR. Um, so it was originally published on in 2022, but it's been updated since. Uh, it says when the 988 suicide and crisis lifeline launched in July, many okay, many mental health providers celebrated. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know if they celebrated, but there was like, oh, good. Um, yeah, it's handy. You should remember. Right. And it's like volunteers also with mental health crisis workers, like at the ready to give support. And they have a mo- mobile there. outreach aspect. Right. Sometimes with along, can ride along with police as well. And um, if needed. 
I don't know. Like, I don't know. Why would we not call them? So one Instagram post said 988 is not friendly. Don't call it. Don't post it. Don't share it without knowing the risks. So, oh, because oh, they don't right there, right there, it went to police hospitals. involvement and that you can have emotional and whatever. Well, emotional. I think that if you're having a mental health crisis, call 988. Yeah. That is my recommendation. And I stand, I, by, it. I stand by that too. And it did say, like, this says, like, just be mindful about sending like sending law enforcement to check on people at risk of suicide without their consent especially lgbtq plus or people communities of um like any minority status who may be forced into treatment at higher rates um or not given the appropriate treatment um but still like those are also probably the yeah, folks but who are higher not, risk of suicide that's not the call i'm gonna make right no, i agree <laughs> i was like i was like yeah but they're also like statistically higher and i know the... our local spd um works in conjunction with mental health and does a lot of training everywhere. correct right. so yeah. i know at least locally that there's a big effort to um you know Right, Where? right, and and I think that that that's like the trauma, like they called it a traumatizing system. But I think that when people are calling in, it's because they are in crisis, and nothing is going like nothing's going to feel great in that moment. And when when you are reaching out for help, sometimes you are asking for help that you don't want, but you know you want right. It. And looking <laughs> back, you'll be like, I'm glad I didn't want to die. Right, and even if you did want to die that's not the state law so i'm sorry sorry it's illegal it is illegal here um <laughs> this person i realize there's an urge to rescue people in crisis it's not an urge it's like to help i don't know anyways that's, that's a key article that's a tangent that i don't i didn't appreciate oh i saw it and i didn't appreciate it i don't like it i don't appreciate it i i, like that I know NPR. people who've had like i don't call that's fine like i think people have their own self-determination right like it's but your choice. i don't think telling people not to call to help other people is helpful all right so let's round back here i don't even know how we to start talking about suicide doors um okay anyway so i don't remember either i don't know i don't know Let's just fast forward a bit here. So a lot of history, blah, 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 blah. fast forwarding to right around 2000, NRA um, getting very involved in politics. Uh, the president of NRA proclaiming from my cold dead hands at the 2000 NRA convention as he held mm -hmm. a rifle above his head um, because things were getting tighter with gun restrictions in certain states and in certain ways. Are we going to get to share our opinions at the end about gun control? You can share now. if you. I'd say now. Go, go now. No, I want to wait because you're going through a timeline. I mean, sort of. I'm skipping tons <laughs> for the sake of time. But yes. Uh, yeah. So there was a lot of division uh, because of that. NRA bumper stickers became a big giant thing around then. And uh, so, do you know Al Gore? Of course. Do you know Al Gore? Uh, I mean, yeah, we're pros. <laughs> Bros. Uh, the NRA experienced setbacks on gun restrictions in the 1990s from the 1981 attempted assassination on, on Reagan. So there was like some ripples in that. And then the Brady Bill was one um, that, let's see here, sorry. The, so in 1993, the law known as the Brady Bill for Reagan's press secretary, Jim Brady, who was wounded in saving his life. Um, it established a waiting period and other restrictions to support the NRA member, Ronald Reagan. So waiting for that. And then Congress enacted domestic ban on assault weapons, like combat style, semi-automatic, like war, you can war, still zone, buy them. war zone guns. Why is it that you can still get them? Um, well, some, it depends like how they're made because they can may look, it's more about like the clips and the rounds and is it, uh, autom automatic or because it's not supposed to be an automatic or blah, 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 blah. You can still buy those though. The, what are the AR-14s? But it's, it's how the clips are and stuff like, cause they're, you they're can't. Still automatic, I believe. It's, so when I did the, cause I, I did the police training, um, with the police department here and I got to shoot one of their automatics so it's like not legal <laughs> and they were yeah they just shared like a little snippet about like 
why it wasn't and that I got to shoot it. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Um, Seems like people have them all the time. Right. Uh, well, okay, let me see here. Let me look, because maybe they're semi auto I just, it seems or... like it's the weapon that you read about when there's a mass shooting. Well, like that. right. But a lot of times it's like, how many separate clips do you have for that versus like, okay, um, hold on. Okay, so Washington, I'll get out of here. Washington's state banned assault weapons. Uh, April 25th, 2023, Washington state assault weapons were banned by Jay Inslee. And I mean, that was just last year. I know that's actually odd. So, you know, how many AR 14s year. are out there? Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're not available for sale in the state <laughs> above the table, nor would they be allowed to be manufactured or imported here. The amendment added to the bill will allow gun makers to sell in stock inventory that was acquired before that date to out of state consumers for 90 days. Oh my gosh, could you imagine the like yard sales that happened? Oh, yeah. Wow. I didn't. I had no idea. Yeah. So there's the AK and the AR, and the yeah AK74, 47, M4, M16. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. It wasn't that long ago at all. So basically, those things are like telescoping stocks, threaded barrels, muzzle bridge. So there's bricks. a shit ton of them out there. Right. Because it was only last year. So they are, they exist. And they could be sold all around. You well, know, all around the country, around yeah, like, the world some craft fairs you know some barter fair right um craigslist maybe etsy etsy you can etsy yourself some <laughs> uh automatic pistol i don't know um anyway so don't do that no don't, don't do, do that. that don't do that uh <laughs> correct don't do those things all right so you're yeah that's and that's here i don't know even other states are going to be probably who knows i'm everywhere. sure it varies yeah just basically the are the um the decision enshrined by the long-standing nra tenant that the second amendment right to firearms was meant for a private individual as well as a well-regulated militia so they kind of broadened the term out so the modern day NRA has a well established response formula after mass shootings. Uh, the NRA we know today, um, so after like the uh, like the shooting in Las Vegas, mm, that was mass shooting was horrible. Um, they first the organization remained silent for a period of days, offering only a message of sympathy for victims and a request that the tragedy not be politicized. So that's kind of pretty standard. And then the organization begins to engage, usually with a few officers and spokespersons who have been through this multiple times, so certain lobbyists that they know. And then they make round on, rounds on TV talk shows, cable channels, and start, um, they have the same kind of well-practiced yeah, they're talking points. talks about faith in guns and the use of self-protection and NRA in the view of the Constitution. So there's kind of the same layout anytime there's a school or school shooting or otherwise. Anything. Sorry, that was, yeah. No, I think that was not at the concert. Was that the Las Vegas? Yeah, that was a concert. Yeah. Terrific. Right. Uh, so I texted my ex to see if he was home, but he said he's not. Oh, he's going to be back in a few minutes. Uh, that Second Amendment guarantees the right to keep and bear arms, and the Supreme Court has recently reaffirmed that this right applies to private individuals and not just organized militias. Uh, the organization lays the blame to gun violence on criminals and producers of Hollywood movies and video games of the failures of, and failures of the mental health system. Um, I take horrible offense <laughs> to multiple things. Well, yeah, I mean, it's... people want to blame mental health issues, but... And it's, video games. It's yeah. not, I mean, when you look at these things, it's usually not people with mental health issues. It's usually somebody that, you know, got a divorce and then got fired from the job or something like right. that. Right, right. Or a previous member of militia or, you know, the post office. So. Right, that old phrase going, phrase going postal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm texting him. What do you think about the NRA? Yes, yes, yes. See what he says. Okay. 
it's good to have diverse um, points of view. It is, it is. And that's, I feel like I've chosen a fairly good middle ground. It, so it says that it reminds people to that it's not possible to legislate away the evils in the world. So mm. they're like, you know, by, it's kind of the prohibition concept of like, by trying to regulate, over-regulate doesn't mean it's going to go away. No, it just went underground. Mm -hmm. So it comes down That's to... That's why we have the cool Durkins to go to, because it we have all these subterranean places that used to be speakeasies. Right, right, right. So they said if it comes down to, you know, if your glass breaks in the middle of the night, there's no government authority on the planet that substitutes for your own right to pull out a gun. Yeah, but doesn't it really vary by state, like, the laws about I mean, shooting somebody? Yeah, certain things, like, even in Washington, like, you, there are realms of self-protection, but they, if they're on your property, that doesn't mean you get to just shoot them. No. I if mean, their I back is they turned, if they're they actually be, be in right? your house. And, and like facing you and how many times. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's, it's a lot. It gets, I mean. This is why I don't have guns. <laughs> right. So you're going to look at everything. Um, I'm not going to be able to be doing math equations, you know. So in the, in the that moment of stress, a fully automatic is where you can just hold the trigger and yeah. many, 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 That's many it. rounds. Okay. Semi-automatic, there would have to be more. So um, basically looking at like, is that even necessary? Like what makes that necessary? Other than if you're planning to kill mass amounts of people. And I, and I think that's mm -hmm. a pretty strong argument on the gun control side. I agree. Like you don't need that to go hunting. No, you know, and and the fact that that is what typically gets you like that it it's the thing that can stop a mass shooting from killing more people is a gap, is a moment when they're going to reload something. and somebody yeah. can tackle and do something. But if there's nonstop, there's no time for intervention. So yeah, no time to interface the assailant. Right. And then uh, just to end on see how I brought back the one of the NRs, um, they said, NRs. Just, NRs. our founding fathers believe strongly in gun rights for citizens. Don't try to put new laws in place that don't fix problems. So there you go. There's that. Um, that wasn't the Scientific American page. Just so you know. Well, and I think that's an oversimplification of the issue. Well, it's it's a it's an overview of the issue for sure. Well, that last statement. You said. Oh, right. Like, don't, what do, do we say it again? Right now. Don't put laws in place to what? That don't fix problems. That don't fix problems. Okay. Right, right. Um, I do just want to add on here um, from Scientific American um, evidence for research <laughs> and Supreme Court's uh, rulings based on said research. Um, that more guns do not stop more crimes, which is often what is cited as if, uh, if only that teacher had a gun on them, they could have prevented that crime. Mm -hmm. from the bus drivers. The bus it. driver, right. And that is shown to actually be the opposite, which is kind of your point. Well, look at the countries that have very low gun violence. It's because we don't have guns. Right, or, right. yeah, they're not legal there. If they don't have it, the police don't have them, they have sticks. <laughs> they just smack each other and then they go about their day um <laughs> ow darn you so let's not minimize the pain of a good stick a, smacking a good <laughs> sporting with a stick guns took more than thirty six thousand lives and that was in oh gosh this is so outdated it's not in 2015 so i'm sure this is no 20, look up 2023 2023 yeah like that's there's, there's let's look up our last complete year of okay. data I'm going to pull that in just a second then. Um, so, however, gun advocates will argue the opposite. I don't know why. Um, after all, since 1991, Americans have acquired 170 million new guns, while murder rates have plummeted, according to the NRA. I mean, I think, <laughs> what's behind this? I think Apologies. some of Donald it's... Trump. Well, Sorry. no, because even <laughs> him, could, after the recent assassination, it's right. like... How could this happen in our country? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, how, Donald? You tell me. Um, but I th I think that there, it's there's fear behind it. Mm -hmm. Fear of rights being taken away and then nobody being able to have a gun at all. Right. 
Um, I think there's that. There I are think no there's... gun-free U.S. communities, first of all. So, like, <laughs> that doesn't exist. But I, I think it's like, oh, you know, right, we give like, them an inch, they'll take them out. But that's not, hap that hasn't happened. I'm just trying to get in the head of warts. somebody that, that's fine. you know, has a strong stance. Right. Because nobody has threatened it. Though. You have to be able to understand where people are coming from if we're ever going to make inroads. But there's know? never, it's not a here and now problem. It's never been threatened. But we have to acknowledge that that there I have is to acknowledge that, that, that is what they think and believe. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and I think there's also a strong um, ideology mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. um, and politics. That it's, you know. it's my right and you know, I think that runs deep. That's very strong. Mm -hmm. So I don't think anything's going to change until we can, like, really acknowledge that f from a very human place. Oh, right. Well, and people are scared. People want to protect themselves and the people they care about. And yeah, dumb. especially this is an F to work world. That. And it people want to defend themselves. And I mean, I, yeah. I, I'm I waiting for the day I can taser somebody. So, like, I get it. See? So I'm not against that part of it. Like, sure. Um <laughs> So I In, I texted okay, my yeah. ex. I said, okay. "What do you think about the NRA? What do you think you said?" <laughs> I love it. No, he said I it's stupid. It. Oh, really? it's a political group at this point. <laughs> I mean, it is. <clears throat> Excuse me for the last forty years. Uh, yeah. So the uh, some of the research that was done. They've done, there's several dozen peer reviewed studies and in 2015, a study that came out used data from the FBI and the CDC and research from Boston Children's Hospital, Harvard University. And they found that firearm assaults were 6.8 times more common in the states with the most guns versus the least guns. Also in 2015, a com combined analysis of 15 different studies found that people who had access to fire firearms at home were nearly twice as likely to be murdered as people who did not. But that may also be a social cultural thing too and socioeconomic thing. Be, yeah. And yeah, I can see that being a thing. The evidence has been so slow to accumulate though because of restrictions placed on Congress um, in terms of research around that uh, like researching anything that sounds anti-gun that can mm -hmm. get hard to get money behind oddly enough right right o oddly um but there's a lot of studies that go the other direction because there's a lot of money behind it from the inners uh so i don't know yeah i guess we can just end there with like thoughts because there's a lot of mm -hmm. i don't know like 75 percent more burglaries that year than on average in previous five like there's like always like some sort of data point that these that both sides throw out and uh right you know. i mean data can be spun correct like i just <laughs> at my my other work um you know there's a lot of metrics i have to track and and i've been presenting these monthly metrics yeah yeah because they were looking good and we're meeting our targets i love doing that and then, and then the last month it didn't <laughs> like, oh. so you know what i did instead i presented the last Literally. six months average which Ooh. did meet the target but nice. my boss is too smart and saw right through it she's like but what was for the month <laughs> right that's um that's it's called being sneaky first of all um okay so here's the gun violence so smart and resourceful strategic maybe. and strategic, determined determined mm -hmm. Correct. That's, right. That's the Taurus way. Um, <laughs> here you go. So 2023, gun injuries have dropped. A growing list of states now have tighter laws on gun sales. So they're at a four-year low for gun sales. Still, the problem is far from over. Blah, 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 blah. Tens of thousands of people killed or wounded by guns. Lower than the record in 2021. Slightly higher. Can you just tell me? Okay. It's down 12.3%. <laughs> And the average decrease in homicides across U.S. cities in 2023. So we're we're down. Um, That's good. It's from 175 cities. The vast majority of homicides are committed with guns still. And most crime data in 2023 showed that it's likely to conclude with one of the largest um, national declines ever recorded. Here's cool. a question. That's good to know. Oh, 18,874 
is the number of firearms death, excluding suicides in 2023. Here's a question that I don't have an answer to. I love this. Do you think that when a minor um, does some kind of thing, oh, the parent yeah. should be responsible? Gosh, I had that. Because that just happened with that one right. kid. I can't remember his name, but yeah. the parents were actually held accountable for his actions. Right, right. Like, what do you think about that? I feel conflicted. I am conflicted. Um, I To me, it has a lot to do with how the like the storage of the firearms. Um, Cause to, I do think parents are responsible for how they're stored. However, once being a teenager myself, I feel like this has gotten lower and lower. You got a saggy mic. I know, and I'm like <laughs> sagging down here. Um, whatever, it's fine. Uh, like I, 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 I don't know. I knew where the key to my dad's safe was. Like I, sorry dad, I mean, you weren't that good at hiding it. Yeah. And but not of his own fault and it was hidden, right. but like kids watch when yeah. i ran an iop group for for teens we have the door key codes i'd have to change that stupid effing lock key like at least once a month because they they watch intentionally and then all of a sudden you see them put it in you're like they're no, smart no kids are you know, they're like smart. covering over their hand it doesn't matter they it doesn't they matter watch they see everything and, they and they're know. smarter than adults like honestly Way in smarter. a lot of ways <laughs> and they have a lot of more time on their hands <laughs> and their whole focus is on, on yes. like, ruining you <laughs> they're they're focused they're determined yeah. yeah so that's when i'm i'm not sure how i feel yet about that um i mean i think the little Littles for sure. Yeah. Littles, I think that's like it's so tragic and like it just shouldn't be a thing. Like I yeah. don't, I don't want to know that if I have a kid and they go on a play date with a friend that that parent might just not have be the stuff locked up. Yeah. yeah, to me that's like not a nah nah. But they get like teen, like older teen, and, especially. And like, did they? Was there an attempt to keep it safe? Or was it just out? Yeah. I need to. Yeah, I need to be on the laying jury. on the coffee table. I need versus... to be on the jury, but for some reason, yeah. nobody ever wants me on a jury. I've like, never made felt, it. I keep neither. trying. And apparently, they don't want like my opinions. They don't like me either, and I really. The second really I say I'm a mental that. health worker, they're like, No, no I'm done. Thanks. Yeah, I'm done every time. <laughs> Darn. Sometimes I progress to like the second step. I'm, I'm like, never. Ooh, is this gonna be my? my time to shine i've never and then, no, i never and it's just a really long day with really crappy snacks i never had the crappy snacks. oh no, i never get snacks. that i just like get a le the letter and i have to fill out the thing oh and, and then i no i go for it because i'm like i want to be i want to do my i mean it is your civic duty to sit on a train i don't care i mean that's not why i do it i just I honestly mean, am interested in crime honestly i don't really appreciate that thing of it's my civic duty to do that either i don't really uh, like you ascribe. get a stipend i don't give a shit <laughs> i mean it's not worth the time it's like the time i took the crisis cell phone for the weekend it wasn't worth the 300 dollars. so i'm sorry it wasn't it was stressful and i never did it again do you know that i did on call for so long that i started having auditory hallucinations of the sound of the cell phone <laughs> oh my gosh no i i <laughs> One, I never slept that whole weekend because I was like, this is fine. This is, no, it was not it's fine. It's not fine. Because when you're in that, like, waiting for the no, crisis you all the time, you don't relax. sleep. You don't, and you yeah. never sleep. But um, I had that back when I worked in a group home setting, and I had a, um, I worked, like, just one weekend in, the, like, a medical version of mental health versus my behavioral yeah. group home. And, and this lady, she screamed. She just screamed all the time. Yeah. That's what she did. And I literally went to sleep that weekend and I could hear her screaming in my head all night long for the whole oh weekend. It was horrible. Like yeah. it doesn't go away. No, it, you probably it brought affects it back. your mental health, I believe. Gosh, Definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's probably scarred me. Yeah. <laughs> probably made me the counselor in the day. Yeah. I mean, I, I think something needs to change. I firmly stand on that. What that change looks like, I do not know. I don't know. It's a complicated. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think people should be able to go like, hunting. And I, I like the fact that I can buy have, it and like learn about it and clean it and go to the gun. Have range a regular sure. gun. I mean, do people need the crazy stuff? No. Do you need a hundred things? Like, is this like s piling up? Like, sure. I mean, if, 
I just like as if I'm your neighbor, I don't think that's fair. First of all, <laughs> that you have a sick because, child, right? Because you know when if that happens, like obviously then, you're gonna take over and come and get my milk. Yeah, I mean to play devil's advocate, if it is the freaking end of days and full apocalypse mode. I'm going to be the one like, why didn't I stockpile? But the thing is, is when things start, like there was a period of time, I remember because it was right around when I got my, my gun, like, uh, like the ammunition for my nine millimeter, like it was almost always out of stock because people would instantly go and buy everything. Yeah. So if you're not savvy and on it, you're just going to have a gun with no bullets. So. And when we were early on in COVID and things were nuts, um, and I was thinking about like, I don't have any survival skills. I don't have the thing that people are going to let me get into their compound, you know, if I'm knocking at the wall. Right. I don't have anything. Like, right. I can make origami frogs. That's basically it. Oh, are you good at, can you make origami frogs, like, good enough where they um, can do the hop? Yeah. Really? I can't get the hop down. Yeah, I can make them really fast. That was my talent show. I actually did. Wow. I made, like, a whole bunch in, like, two minutes or something. That's but... Awesome. <laughs> they're not going to get you into the apocalypse compound is my point right so i was apocalypse like skills. okay so uh barter is going to be my it's thing mm -hmm. and, I, and i thought well yeah, if we, i could learn how to macrame. if i could learn how to make my own bullets like pack mm -hmm. your own like mm -hmm. that could be my thing and i actually got kind of interested in like almost what? doing that but i don't know what? like where you make your own yeah bullets. it's dangerous well if you do it like wrong yeah. yeah but i was like that could be my end I mean, this was early days when I was, you know, very stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, <laughs> until next time. Um, I, I really think if we're ever going to make progress, we do need to truly put ourselves in someone else's shoes and try to understand where they're coming from. Because if we're not addressing those core beliefs, we're not, we're just going to be divided. Right. And I think understanding that uh, that there are many different types of communities of people everywhere and, you know, speaking for everybody and like a big sweeping statement isn't helpful. So um, until next time, like listen to the diverse array of uh, voices out there about the topic and, you know, make up your own and go from there. Yay. Bye. Bye.